Swim check one, two. Bike check one, two. Run check one, two. I think we're ready. Let's try this. Welcome to the Try Beginner's Luck podcast, a podcast where we explore the sport of triathlon from a variety of perspectives to help beginner triathletes on their journey. I am your host, Mashonda Shines. Welcome back to another edition of Try Beginner's Luck. I think this episode for me is getting to be bittersweet because I know that our season is coming to an end or our season half break is coming to an end. We have one more episode after today. And as much as I love interviewing, this season has tried every ounce of me and it's it's stretched me in so many different ways, Um, especially with balancing a full-time job, y'all. When I was just modeling and doing my entrepreneurial ventures, it was easy, right? Because I could schedule time and sleep when I wanted to sleep, wake up when I wanted to wake up, work the schedule around myself. But life for me lately has been interesting. And I think as I was thinking about what I would say in this episode, triathlon represents so much about life. We, when things don't go our way, we have to pivot and transition and we do that well. And I don't know any other sport where you come back as quick and have to think as quick on your feet. I mean, there's a lot of sports, but of course this is dedicated to triathletes. So I am thinking about our sport in particular and how it's made such an impact in my life and how the lessons play out in real time for me. If I sound a little nasally, that's because I am, because I don't know why everyone else during the springtime was you know, having their challenges, I was good. And all of a sudden I cut the air condition on and now I can't breathe. Another story for a different day. But today is about beginners. You all know, I love a good beginner story. And because this is real time, it's Juneteenth, like for real, for real, we are recording on Juneteenth. Like it's Monday, this episode will air on Wednesday. And I have a young lady with me that just did her first triathlon two days ago. So you know it's fresh. It is going to be raw. And she said it's quite hilarious. So you know I love when you got a story that's hilarious because we all have that funny story of our first time. With that said, I get to bring to the Tribe Beginners Luck family, get to bring to the stage Tata. Valaiho. Welcome to Try Beginner's Luck. How you doing? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I was, I was getting the thumbs up. <laughs> Pronunciation right. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. How's it going? I'm I'm very well. I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, great energy, great lipstick more than anything. First thing I noticed when I when I hopped on the call. Thank you. I changed my lipstick twice because it was not working out. I was like, wait a minute, oh, let's get it together. Yeah. So thank you. No, the shade works works for you on, on this call, just to let thank you know. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I forgot to mention, you are with Empire Triathlon yes. Team. Yes, they're fantastic. They're great. Yes. Uh, I found them online and I love the energy. I especially loved uh, Doc's energy when I spoke to her. You know, I mean, that girl can really connect with somebody. I think that's just a talent right there. And, you know, funny enough, sorry. I was going to say, speaking of connect, she connected us like 30 minutes ago. (laughs) Exactly. Literally 30 minutes ago. Literally. And no, I wanted to tell you um, a quick story about Doc because, you know, I really enjoyed her energy speaking to her. um, And, and I remember going into one of the, one of the sessions, one of the exercises and one of the beginners that also joined basically said, oh, you know, I'm here because doc was fantastic to talk to. We had a great conversation. We connected. So, you know, she managed to, to rope me in. And then afterwards I'm like, huh, I thought doc and I had a connection. It's not just me. She, you know, I'm not the special one. She has it with every single one in the team, (laughs) which is great. You know, but that's you are the special one because she <laughs> has a special connection where she has it with you, but yet everyone feels very special when they're in her presence. And I think that's the magic of Doc 
golden yes. holiday. Hence her name, golden in the middle. Like that's yeah. what she does. Very she, unique. Mm-hmm. Very unique gold finder, gold seeker, and mm-hmm. just lover of life and people. And so shout out to you, Doc. Thank you. She's yes. also been on the podcast. So you want to check out her podcast. For oh. those of you who are listening, she was in season two, I believe. So go back to season two and check that out because it, that was that was a good episode too. I will. I'll do that. Oh, and that's for other people too, like those who are listening. So it's for everybody. Everybody go check out Doc. Go to the holiday. With <laughs> yeah, everyone do that. Yeah. <laughs> So it's all about you now, Tata. Like, what made you come into sport? Um, so I have always been very active. Um, played competitive sports since high school. Uh, you know, I have have always liked to expend energy. And I figured, um, we, well, I recently, my wife and I recently just moved to New York ten months ago. So I figured, hmm, okay, then maybe I should probably, you know, check out. Uh, check out some of these sports clubs, see what I'm going to get into with these this time. You know, I mean, my wife and I move every three to five years for work. So it's, it's um, one experience after the next for each of the countries we've been posted at. And this time though, because I kind of messed up my knee playing Frisbee and tennis during the pandemic, I figured, Hmm, you know what? I'm in my forties. I probably need to lay off some of those some of those competitive environments where I'm constantly running around with, you know, I'm running after 20 year olds and 20 year olds running after me. And <laughs> so I figured, okay, well, you know what? Triathlon seems to be a challenging enough sport that'll, that'll, you know, that'll occupy my time. Uh, and it's such a new space for me. I mean, I, I recently got into cycling during the pandemic as well. You know, a couple of friends were saying how, Hey, there's a 200 kilometer bike ride. Come join us. You know, we'll manage to catch up chit chat while we're on the bike for how many how many hours so i figured okay you know when i bought my first bike the 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 bike guy was like well how many how long have you been biking you know if you're if you're doing a 200 kilometer bike ride and that's roughly 120 miles i said oh no i i know i bike but i don't actually road bike i don't cycle and you know at that point the guy running the shop was like you know you need to start questioning the quality of your friends because this is going to be a painful one um, but I actually did quite enjoy it. I mean, I, I got myself a trainer. You know, I love sweating. I love expending energy. And it's just, you know, it's just pushing my body to, to its limits, right? And at the same time, you know, yeah, I didn't I didn't experience uh, the need to be in a, a competitive environment where I was constantly sizing up my opponent, looking at their weaknesses, see how I could exploit those physical athletic weaknesses based off of what my strengths were. Because, you know, that's how you are in, the, in, in other sports, right? You look at how you can potentially exploit said weaknesses to win. So to me, moving past that was so refreshing, just focusing on, you know, on, on my body, my capabilities, what I could do and what I couldn't do. So I did that bike ride. It was painful, but it was lovely. I ended up spending time with only one girl out of eight friends because we were the only two girls that had the same pace. So that was funny. Um, but yeah, but enjoyed it. No one, no one told me how expensive biking was gonna be. So so now every time I go into a bike shop, bike shop, I'm always like, well, you know, it's for my health, so it's worth it. You know. I'm I'm sure it's the same for everyone. So um so anyway, fast forward maybe a year and a half, we moved to New York and I figured, you know what, I run anyways and I do enjoy swimming as well just you know try triathlon since I have a bike right um so I did I'm very comfortable in the pool uh I'm you know I'm I'm a fairly okay runner fairly okay cyclist so I figured yeah you know what I'll, I'll do a triathlon it's probably easy I can do it I know I can do it I, I I know I'll finish and this is what I tell my wife you know confidence was never an issue for me so I'll you know I'll always say you know I, I know I can do it it's just a matter of how long it'll take me to finish right so coming into this weekend's triathlon I'm fairly comfortable swim started comfortable water was lovely weather was fantastic you know uh, uh, everyone was just lovely that you know the environment the people I get in the water do a couple of strokes get into the first buoy and then, ah, okay, this is my, you know, my goggles are fogging up, but let me, let me swim some more. I swim, I swim, I swim. I forget the sight. After like 10 strokes, my kayak guy screams at me and says, 
go back to the course. You're way off course. Go back to the course. Go left. So literally, I was swimming towards the middle of the course instead of literally staying within that, the, you know, the swimming lanes, right? So I go back to the course, and then another 150 or so yards, another kayak again screams at me, basically comes to me and says, ma'am, you're way off course. Go back to the course. I, I kid you not. Nishanda, I, I was called not called in not once, not twice, but three times. You know, I mean, you know how beginner triathletes have, you know, you, you have your Strava on and then you'll the, you'll see the route. On the route, I literally, my route basically showed how I tried to spell my name in cursive. That's how my route was. I, I'm not even joking. It's it's my route in Strava for swimming is how not to do a swim for beginner triathlons. It's it's not even like those squiggly lines where you go around and it's just zigzagging a little bit, you know, because you're a beginner. No, mine was literally spelling my name in cursive in the water. Wow. <laughs> I need to show you. I need to show you because it, it's hilarious, I tell you. <laughs> Please text it to me when we're finished. Because I will. we can add this because that, that would be that's I, I, interesting. You literally spelled your name. So that means you went up, down, around. Up, down, left, right. Up, right, I went everywhere. I mean, I went everywhere. I don't even know if, you know, if you can, I'll send this to you because when people saw it, there were, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, hold on. No, 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 no. no text no, it to me. Let no, me see I'll if I can it. see it. I'll text it to you. Um, because it was hilarious. I mean, I laughed at myself when I looked at it because I'm like, what was I on? What did I take that day? <laughs> what was in your coffee? I, I don't, you know what? That's a really good question. But you know, I, I did a, you know, I did a quick review of my performance on race day and I figured, okay, poor sighting technique, actually non-existent. It wasn't like poor, no, non-existent. Um, because at one point, you know, I remember, I, I remember, uh, you, swimming and then looking up and then basically thinking oh I don't know where I am I, I was disoriented right because I've never I've, and, and I, I at some point I was also really getting super frustrated and super tired and this was the moment I was telling Doc about this and Ali and some of the other coaches you know I was telling them that you know what for the first time in my entire life for half a second I felt self-doubt because I was tired, I was super frustrated, and I just, you know, because I knew that the kayaks were there, I actually thought in my head, <laughs> maybe I can just have myself picked up because I'm done. I'm, what am I doing this again? I, mean, I can be sleeping, really, <laughs> for half a second. And I tell you, Mashanda, for somebody who's been competing in sports all her life, I've never felt that way. I have never felt frustrated. Um, and, and tired at the same time that I wanted to literally just quit. So that to me, and I don't know who else I was telling. I think I was telling my wife and my wife's like, oh my God, I'm going to hear this the entire weekend. <laughs> um, I was telling her, I was like, that feeling is so alien to me that I, you know, it's a little bit traumatic actually, you know? So, so, um, cause it, it, it's funny because anyone who knows me, will say, oh no, confidence is never an, an issue with that. But you know what? You know, the meme that's perfect for this would be, oh no, 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 no. Tata saying, I got this, you know, triathlon, that's easy. And the, the triathlon meme would be like, hold my beer or hold my electrolytes or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know that meme? That's essentially what, what this is. It knocked me down a peg or two, you know? You know what? I think what you're, what you experience is what at some point we all want to experience or we all experience at some point to knock us back into, um, what is it? Reality. Yeah. And, and that you know. just says how much more you're going to try harder to get back in the swing of things and to try harder to beat that moment, you know, that opportunity that you just had, because you're like, I'm not going to be defeated by this. I win. Like that's your mentality. And I can hear that. It's like, I'm confident. Like I can yeah. hear it. I can feel it. And for this to make you be like, 
but what the hell did I just do? I could exactly. be sleeping. That's the part that so many of us, I could be sleeping, but you're not. You're out there because you like that. You you hunger for that challenge. I do. I do. It, I do. Um, I actually do. I mean, coming into my 40s, I've always told myself, okay, well, this is going to be the decade of, say, you know, um, inculcating a growth mindset. So, you know, I've been putting myself in spaces of discomfort so that I can truly, truly grow, right? Um, so, you know, I felt like in my 30s, you know, I put my body through a lot of things. I competed and, you know, and, and, and put myself in, in environments that were actually really difficult. Um, and I kind of tested myself in these types of, of environment. And, you know, I'm happy to say it, it, it really taught me a lot about resiliency and about how, you know, I'm very good with, with change. I'm very adaptable. Um, so I figured, okay, let's coming into my forties, growth mindset, new experiences, new challenges. You know, I want I want to be, I want to put myself in, in, in spaces uh, that are uncomfortable to, to see how else I can grow. And this is exactly it, right? This is exactly the situation that I'm talking about. And last Saturday's experience was just something that I had never experienced before. And my wife was essentially saying how that you remember when we went diving and, and I, I, I almost cried because I was I was out. apparently she panicked underwater, and when we were when when we had surfaced, she was a little bit quiet, a little bit you know unnerved, and then she she cried a little bit, and then she told me that that's exactly how I felt. I was frustrated, I was tired, and it was a little bit traumatic for me. And I'm like, oh my god, you know, I'm so sorry you felt that way. Now I know how it feels, you know. And I could never sympathize that way with her because I just it never registered it, that I don't know how that feels, and now I do. Just like that life experience, that life experience that I was just talking about earlier, how triathlon is like, it replicates life. You now going through that experience has you being able to empathize and sympathize now, makes you more relatable. Absolutely. It's not that we desire those experiences, because listen, who wants to feel that way? Who wants to feel frustrated and tired? I know I don't. However, triathlon has a way of humbling you and giving you a slice yes. of humble pies I would like to call it a little, just a little slice of humble pie just Absolutely. tastes good occasionally well you know what <laughs> we have another guest joining us and I'm really excited so this is going to be like a double beginner situation Jaden awesome. welcome to try beginners luck you are with the no limits team Maria uh, is uh, the head coach but Jason Bahumundi actually coaches you so we'll tag team you right in to just give us your take on triathlon how did you get started and come into this beautiful sport um i guess uh my first experience with uh a significant endurance activity was when i decided to celebrate my 50th birthday in 2017 by going across the country on a bicycle uh it was unsupported i dragged my own stuff um, it, I'm a member of Adventure Cycle, which is a nonprofit, which has 12 maps to get you from Astoria, Oregon to Yorktown, Virginia. And I flew out to Oregon because I wanted to be motivated to get back home. <laughs> I live in Pennsylvania. And I said, oh, if I start in Yorktown, Virginia, I might just give up in Kansas. So um, it was a really amazing <clears throat> life changing experience. And that got me started because after that, I came back, I took 80 days, I was in phenomenal shape and I did it on a trike. I didn't use a standard bike because uh, my journey begins with dealing with food addiction and being quite overweight. And uh, while I'm not a person who's into like body shaming or that, you know, love your body where it's at, everyone should, I couldn't do the things in my life I wanted to at almost 300 pounds and five foot eight. I, I, I just, I couldn't even get into a kayak. Um, and so I came back and I did my first Olympic triathlon the next year, no training. I was just like, how hard could it be? It's just, a, just barely a mile swim. I borrowed a bicycle. And listen, I hadn't been on a two wheel bike in a hundred years. I borrowed a bicycle that was like way too small for me. I rode it three days before the event around the block. It was, it was flat. It was 24 miles, flat as a pancake. And, uh, you know, I did the walk, I walked because I have arthritis in both my knees, so I cannot run anymore. So I walked it and uh, it was fun. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do another one. And, th and then I did another Olympic, the same one, still my own training. But then I decided that on my bucket list, 
I wanted to do a full Ironman. And so I said, well, you need to master the 70, the half first. So a coworker of mine, who's also with No Limits said to me like a year ago, HP, Happy Valley's having their first 70. You should do it. And I was like, yeah, the hills are going to be challenging. It's going to be challenging. <laughs> so that's my story. I got started because of going cross country on my bike, on a trike. Uh, so my biggest challenge in the triathlon has been transitioning from being on a three-wheel recumbent to doing a two-wheel bike. It is a huge transition for me, like huge. I'd rather swim 2.4 miles easily, easily than deal with the bike. Well, it's, it, this could not have worked out perfect. My heart is happy and my heart gets happy. I sometimes lose the track of words coming out my mouth in a very uh, cohesive way. The fact that Jaden just joined us, Tata has been with us. They did not hear each other's story, but have the same challenge affinity of wanting to be challenged. And how hard can this triathlon be? And they both got sliced some humble pie. Look, I've gotten sliced plenty, but this could not have worked out in my favor as beautiful as today. And I'm just going to let you guys know something. When I woke up this morning, I said, I am going to flow however the day flows. This is going to work out. I am not going to be stressed about not knowing who's going to be this week's guest. And the fact that I got two for the no stress of one, Y'all, it's a winning day today on Juneteenth. Okay, sorry. I just had to have that moment. No, no worries. I think that, again, what did I, I mentioned before is like triathlon presents life. And because I was flexible enough to just go with the flow and not be stressed, and I watched, started watching Ted Lasso, just chilling, you know, enjoying the day. Thank you both for your time. Thank you for your humility, your stories, because the confidence that you both exude in coming into sport is what we need to keep sport going because you're not going to ever want to stop. You're going to want to keep going yeah. and stretching yourself and challenging yourself in different ways. And I can just see Tata now, like a year from now, I am doing my first full. I can see that, right? Because you're like, what? This is not going to defeat me. I am going to defeat it. And I absolutely love it. And Jaden, the fact that you don't run anymore, you know how many times people tell me that they can't do triathlons because they don't, they can't run. Mm -hmm. And you are proving that you can still try and not have to run. You can walk it. Yeah, actually I had some real challenges with my feet that I'd never have before, which I had to deal with last summer. I had to have surgery on one of my feet because I have flat feet. I mean, like really pretty flat feet. And because I had been obese for really my entire adult life, it either had an effect or there, there was some genetic issue. So actually I had to have um, orthotics, but then it got more complicated and I have to have what are called braces to support my ankle and my arch. So in the transition area, one of the things I'm going to have to deal with is I got to put on these braces, these, this ankle brace combination. And when I did my Olympic, the second Olympic, I was walking along and I wasn't able to train very well because I didn't get those braces till very late. And that Olympic event is in July. I didn't get the braces till the beginning of July. So I was not able to train because I actually couldn't walk very much without being in quite a bit of pain, which I had never experienced before last year. So I'm grateful that I was able to work that out so that now this year I've been able to vigorously train on the walk. And I can at this point sustain about a 15 plus pace uh, average for close to the 13 miles, which was just for me, like just an, un I could not have done that this time last year. So the coaching has been a gift that I gave to myself instead of being bullheaded and like getting chintzy with the money. Cause I, one of the gifts of getting older is you realize that money is energy and it's an investment in self. If that's how you choose to use it. And that's how I'm choosing to use it. Trust me. I mean, when I saw the price tag, I was like, okay, you can do it. 
You can. You can do it. <laughs> Again, another thing Tata said right before you joined is that the whole this is expensive. It is. Oh my God, we could not have picked a more expensive it. habit. <laughs> but it's worth it, right? Like it's a healthy habit that keeps us healthy and not having to go to the doctor. So imagine if you weren't healthy and having to go to the doctor, that's that currency exchange, that energy exchange. You'll be stressed out saying, well, not only am I sick, but I'm paying money and have no way of being able to work out. Exactly. So the opportunity to stay healthy and to work out and to do what we love is a gift. Yeah, yeah. So Tata, are you doing Olympic? No, um, well, I'm scheduled to do the Olympic on October, the New York one. Nice. Um, I signed up for the first sprint uh, last Saturday, very first. Nice. And then I have another sprint next month. So are you fast? Are you are you a fast? Are you fast? I mean, generally, are you more I think I'm okay. fast twitch muscle? <laughs> So, so somebody asked some of some of the some of the younger girls asked me. So Tata, what's your strongest discipline? I said, Oh, tennis. Tennis is my strongest discipline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm 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 an okay runner. I'm an okay cyclist. I mean, obviously for, I mean, there there are standards, right? Like when people see when some friends see my Strava, they'll say, Oh my God, that that, that was such a fast half. And I'll say, You know what? That's what I said to the lady who's 10 years older than me and ran 10 minutes uh, faster than oh, me. Oh, yeah. Somebody's always going to be faster, yeah. right? So. Yeah, I mean, I think going back to Machanda's point, it's Machanda, yeah. did I pronounce the question? Machanda. Machanda, sorry. I think going back to Machanda's point, there are so many wonderful life lessons that you learn. And one of the biggest lessons is stay within yourself. Absolutely. We live in a world, a capitalist world, we're always comparing ourselves. We're yeah. being marketed to, to compare ourselves. We're being buy this so you can be better than the next person do that so you can be bigger faster and when you shut down all that noise especially in triathlon okay you, you really want to go up that hill at six miles an hour dude you you are not you are not <laughs> that athlete you're not that athlete at this point you better do your little four mile per hour up that six percent grade and be thankful that you got up to the top yeah 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 you know maybe next year you'll be able to do five miles per hour you know, each, that's it. The only competition is yourself. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. for me, just getting on a two wheel bike any day and being clipped in my biggest fear. Oh my God. Like the being clipped in part. Oh, I like that is, <laughs> that is really frightening for me. Yeah. And yeah. I've had to really, my coach Jason's like, Jay, Jaden, I really need you to practice clipping in and out to make it muscle memory. So yesterday I was on a 66 and a half mile bike ride with 4,000 feet in elevation. And I had some new gearing put on the bike. I got very creative with this gearing. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I have like a, a Cannondale Synapse. It's considered sort of like an entry level. I have to say the eye popping prices on these bikes just is amazing. Yeah. But I have a Cannondale Synapse and the first change I made was to the crank. And I said to the guys at the shop, I said, listen, I, I need more, I need more gearing here to get up this hill. So they changed my crank. I did French Creek Iron Tour, which out in Pennsylvania, very, very hilly, over 3,000, like 3,800 feet in elevation, ridiculous. It's just nothing but hills. I did that, it was a it was a killer. And then I said, I need more bigger chain ring. And I went to a shop and I said, listen to me. Sure, you can put a mountain bike chain ring on this bike. That's what I want. And the lady looked at me and she was very creative and really wanted to solve a problem. She said, yeah, actually we can. So this weekend, I did 4,000 feet in elevation yesterday for Father's Day using the new crank. And I have the nuclear option. It's like 47 teeth chain ring. And other bicyclists who are much stronger hill riders than me saw it and they were like, what is that? I said, the nuclear option because that's what I need. Oh, that's so interesting. That is yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because uh, this is just where I'm at. As a trike rider, as a recumbent rider, I'm used to heavy, like big gears. To Because a bike weighs 35 pounds. I'm used to big gears to get up the hill. So to make the transition to yeah. a two-wheel bike, I, I feel like it's Star Trek. Every time I'm up a hill, I'm like, Scotty, we need more power. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving it all she's got, Captain. What's that now? Please share that 
very, very interesting. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and I think that's what you have to do. You have to do what's right for you. Like some people, I was watching someone ride the other day and they were in a very low position, but really tall and they looked like really scrunched. And the person who was observing with me said, they always ride like that. That's their comfort zone. And I think whatever makes you comfortable, that is one of the keys to this sport and being successful and continuing to do it is make yourself happy and ride, swim, run, walk, however it is going to be helpful for you to stay in and continue to do it. Cause otherwise you're not going to want to do it. And so for you, Jaden, that was changing that crank and making some, something happen for yourself, which maybe I should take a look into that, you know, <laughs> some power or something with that, but I love it. Okay. So what have you had to overcome for you, Jaden, beyond the bike and for you, Tata, like what has it been that thing that you've had to truly overcome in order to succeed in your tri space in the tri space? Um, well, I think I'm still overcoming it. You know, I mean, I've, you know, the, honestly, the, the thing that I probably had to overcome is, is really can really look at some of my negative self-talk. You know, I'm a professor of criminal law. So, <laughs> you know, I always tell my students every morning I wake up and go, let's see how New York time, let's see how humans have behaved badly overnight, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and there's plenty to find, <laughs> you know, um, but I think it's really sometimes the negative self-talk that I've really had to deal with. And Jason's been really great about, it. he's always saying, so let's just tweak that a little bit to what you said, you know, cause I would say something like, yeah, I was the slowest person. <laughs> and he would really want me to tweak that. Yeah, I, I was the slowest person, but he'll catch that I'm saying in a kind of critical negative way. And he's been really helpful throughout the time that I started working him, with him in January to try to get me to shift my language. And that was something that I don't think I was quite as conscious of. Um, but I think honestly, the biggest challenge is being clipped in on the bike and trying to accept that being fully clipped in and going up the hill is a better use of energy than in my case, I would have one foot clipped in and have one foot out just in case. I don't wanna fall. I don't wanna fall and get hurt. I met a woman yesterday. She's only been riding a bike for three years she was she fell at fell over and broke her wrist and some other thing was damaged and everyone's like you're gonna fall over and yesterday i actually almost fell over i didn't i just got out the clips in time but my biggest thing is getting stuck on a hill and getting started on the hill i faced that challenge yesterday i didn't think i could do it i just learned that you have to put the bike in a lower gear to get enough lift off so it, I think the negative self-talk and learning to manage the bike have been my biggest challenges. Nice. Good. nice. I think just to tag on to that, I think my biggest challenge would be, well, I actually haven't um, overcome that challenge yet. So I, before you came in, Jaden, uh, I was telling Mishanda about how hilarious my swim was last Saturday. <laughs> I, I, I sent you um, the Strava route, Amishanda, and I'll send it to you, Jaden, you know, because it's hilarious. It's, I was zigzagging all over the place. In Literally. the pool? In the water? In the lake. Yeah, yeah. In the water. Yeah. <laughs> so, non-existent sighting technique. <laughs> I, I can't see it. Uh, I'm trying to see how I can, I'm trying. You have to uh, connect your phone to the, um, to the computer and share your screen. Or I oh, can just show you guys as well. Oh, you can see it now. You see it. Hold on. Nah, it's it was... still real glare. How long was the swim time? Yeah, anyway. Oh, this was just a, a sprint. So it was okay. a 750 meter swim though. Okay. Uh, but I ended up swimming 276, 278. And all, really all over the place. I was overshooting buoys. I was crossing over. I, I had to be brought back into the course three times with the kayakers. <laughs> Then at some point, I was so frustrated and I was just so annoyed and tired that I wanted, like for half a second, I was thinking to myself, maybe I should just turn, you know, turn in the towel and just quit. And I've never, I've never had to do that ever in my entire life in any sporting event. And I was telling Mishanda how it's such an alien feeling for me because I've never had to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Sport is knocking me down a, a peg or two. 
Just the swim portion? Yeah, just the swim, the swim. Um, but you swim the 750 yards in how long? Um, my my 100 meters is about 240. Oh, 240, okay. So I'm not I'm not a particularly fast swimmer, um, but I'm very confident in the pool. You know, I'm, I'm fairly, I mean, I'm confident swimming in the ocean with snorkels and goggles, but, you know, I realized that swimming with 50, 60 other people following a course, that's a totally different ball game. And I actually underestimated that severely, you yeah. know? So, I mean, clearly, again, if you see the Strava, you will see how severely I underestimated it. <laughs> we'll be sure to post the Strava on um <laughs> with Instagram. So when we post this, we'll probably send it out as a story to show you. And just to put some context around it, a sprint race is 750 meters and you did over 2000, which means you swam almost double what you needed to swim for the day. No, I swam, no, no, not, not double. I swam uh, 976 meters, 78. So I'm probably- oh, nine. I don't know why I heard 2000. I was like, yeah, no, my no, God, no. you saw you swam a, a, a whole mile, ex, like extra. <laughs> yeah, no, I, can you imagine if I did that? I would have probably just quit, yeah. Um, it's not unheard of. So I did, had some friends do uh, Escape the Cape, Alcatraz. They oh. were supposed to only swim, what? I think it was a two mile swim but ended up swimming a 5k that's a big difference so it's not impossible you know what I mean wow. that's why when I heard that I was like man is this the swim but again it's practice it's practice right well the swimming is the probably I think the one aspect of the triathlon that requires the most skill mm -hmm. and I have found this year that I made my most significant gains and changes in my swimming form than I ever did. And I'll be 56 in July. So you can learn new stuff. And even though Jason and I are far apart, I was living on YouTube and looking at swim, freestyle swim stroke and realized I needed to make some significant changes. And when I made those changes, my time changed dramatically. Yeah. So yeah. what were those changes? Well, um, the people. Yeah, the big change is when you, uh, and this was on a video I saw, the lady put her hands up like this and she said, you are going to be doing this when you're doing freestyle. The angle of your stroke, when you go in, your angle is gonna be like, like this, almost at a 130. It's like a, think, assume like think 90, but it's not quite that. It's a little further of an angle. But when she did this, she that helped me understand that underwater, I'm looking for uh, a connection with my making this arm into a giant paddle. Well, what I was doing was hurting my shoulders. Once I made that change and really got into the rotation, like really on your side, and I had some coaching last summer when I went to a, like a swim with some swim folks, a swim team, and that was very helpful. But when I made that change, woo, back muscles recruited, triceps recruited, because then on the back, when you're coming out of that water, you should be right scraping your thigh coming out that water. Come and that's, on. Sorry, that just, I felt like I just screamed in everyone's ear. No. Yeah really made me so happy because this is what this sport is about is that yeah. teaching that teaching moment we are running close okay so we gotta like figure this out let's get some more questions in so Jaden you're not new to it but you're about to do a 70.3 I'm new to that's that you, <laughs> and that's coming up July 2nd happy right. valley Tata you have another sprint coming up what are you looking forward to most this question is for both of you with your next race that you will be able to like click, make all of the things that you have worked on or either learned from your previous racing and incorporate that into the races that you have coming up? Yeah, um, well, for me, it's really exciting better. <laughs> I mean, you know, the achiever in me really wants to do things better. And I'm, 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 I'm very data driven in my approach to things and decisions. And to me, Strava was fantastic because it just allowed me to look at, you know, that race review and said, okay, well, fantastic. I did well on the bike, crushed it on the run, at least, you know, for my, 
given this body and I'm, I'm quite happy with, with that with my performance in those two legs but the swim I know for a fact was a disaster so I'm actually really looking forward to doing better on the swim just being able to practice sighting properly um yeah that's 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 it overall <laughs> and what about you Jada um after I well I have two triathlons though I'm, I'm doing the happy valley on July 2nd and then I have the one the Olympic that I've done many times before so actually that one will be a better will be a better way for me to measure how my training has improved so you know happy valley I just my only goal is please don't get disqualified that <laughs> really I have to tell you that's like you know my main thing is and I may like I have to get my mind right and go, man, you might get disqualified. It's okay. You're going to come back again and try it. Uh, Cause the hills on the bike are just something. <clears throat> there are 5% grade hills. There's one hill that's an average of 5% grade for almost three miles. Oh my Lord. Wow. It's 2.8 miles. Yeah. But what and I that's surrounded by other hills that you deal with. That's at mile 40 of the 56 mile bike lane. So I said to myself, you can do the best you can. You can't control anything else than what you did. And let's see how your training, let's see how formal training changes things. But especially at the second one where I had no training other than myself, I'll really be, I'll see some real difference. Then that's July 16th. So what I hear is that we're just gonna have to have round two at the end of the year where you guys can come back and talk about the progress that you've made throughout the year. Let's transition to this. What has been your favorite part about trying so far? Because the fact that you're continuing, there's something about it that you love. And what I also appreciate is you did not start in your 20s or 30s, respectively 40 and 50. So tell me, like, what's that one thing that you love about sport? Um. For me personally, what I and what I'm enjoying so far is that it it really it really blows every preconceived notion of what athleticism looks like for me. Because again, I, I grew up an athlete. I, I you know all of my the entire 30, 25 years of my life, I played in competitive sports. So I knew what an athlete in my mind, this is what an athlete looked like: muscular, thin, fast, strong. And I would always get coaching from people who I thought were actually, you know, thin, fast, strong, because that's what that's what these spaces look like, right? It, <laughs> triathlon blows all of that out of the water. <laughs> all of that. I mean, I am seeing every shape and size in this course. And I mean, I was I was I was just so impressed at this one lady who was probably at least three times bigger than me. But my God, she swam at least a minute and a half faster than me, or maybe, you know, maybe I exaggerate a little bit, maybe at least 40 seconds faster than me. And, you know, and she's done a couple of Ironmans. I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me. I mean, I think, I think that to me is like the biggest learning so far, Mishanda, you know, and I tell my wife this, I'm a lot, I'm just a lot more, I feel like in terms of how, what the athletic community looks like. And I was telling my wife, you know, I'm like, doesn't Nike have campaigns around these things about representation and about how body shapes and sizes, and, you know, my wife who used to work in advertising is like, yeah, yeah, no, they're actually quite ahead when it comes to insights like that. You mean to say you're just realizing this now? She was pointing that, to, pointing that out to me. And I'm like, yes, I'm only seeing this now. And, you know, I mean, this is a type of experience that every athletic person should have to actually understand what athleticism looks like because it's not the thin the strong that we see in you know in in the spaces that we've lived in as regular people and what athlete, an athlete looks like but really the this right so I'm, I'm so I'm just so grateful that you know I get coached by some teammates who are a little bit bigger than me but my god you know the resilience in their training the fact that they can swim these distances with the body that they have to me is just so impressive so impressive you know i can't even state that enough yeah. anyway that's 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 thus far the learning and what i've what i've been enjoying all right yeah i think for me it's um <clears throat> you know i i was an i played tennis um an intramural level tennis i didn't play tennis in high school i ran track and 
did shot put and did, I didn't run track. I shot, I shot put and discus and I did cross country in college. I was at a university of Chicago as undergrad and was just kind of walk on, you know, they didn't have any different sports teams, but I, I ran cross country. And I think for me, it, what I love about the triathlon is it, it's always an adventure. It's always like, okay, what can I conquer today? What can I be a little bit be better today? And I'm, a, I'm really thrilled that there are older people like myself who are in it, who got started post, you know, 50 and post 50. And I think one of the reasons, other reasons I'm drawn to the Ironman is because when I was younger, I think it was NBC Sports that showed the Hawaii Kona mm -hmm. Ironman. This is like back, I mean, we're going back in the 80s. And I remember being a little kid watching this old, you know, white dude, like 70s do this triathlon and I was like how, how long has he been out there <clears throat> it's midnight he he's still wobbling too you know but I was I was really impressed by that and so I don't I think the narrative for me that I want to be able to reflect in my life is age does not mean that I need to stop and slow down it does not mean that and that narrative in our society is very very it's, it's, it's really bad. I think it's bad. It's a bad narrative. And I don't want to be sedentary as I get older. And so I find that I'm actually, as I get older, I'm in actually better shape than I was when I was younger, like by a long shot. <clears throat> but yeah, so I th think for me, it's, you know, there's always something I can improve upon in the triathlon. It's like never going to end, ever. I'm going to be faster at the swimmer next year. Next, right now I do like a, a 100 yard at about a 201 and I'm looking and I started off the year at like a 240 or a 230 or something like that <clears throat> and I'm expecting next year I'm hoping to be like 140 that would be cool <laughs> and you it can happen and I love that for you Tata it has dismant it's dismantled in your mind what athleticism looks like, because does it really have a look beyond what society has told us? And for you, Jaden, it's being healthy at no matter what the age might be until you can't. I just saw an, a post that an 80 year old man just finished an Ironman two days ago as well. So anything, as long as we put our mind to it and stay consistent, the mental part of it, and I think we've all talked about that, is one of those places where you have to get, become one with your mental. Um, I know for me, it's a challenge, especially like when you've had traumatic incidents happen, you have to really work on it even harder to get your mind in shape and to really wrap your mind around it all. So with that said, welcome to sport. I'm going to have to have you guys back on so that we can talk about a little bit more how you've progressed and how maybe your mindset has shifted a bit. But what I appreciate is what you have said so far because it's been a mouthful. Before we go into our rapid fire questions, I wanna know one thing or a few things you would tell a beginner who's listening or perhaps a person who is a veteran needs to know, tell us what you would say to someone who wanted to try. Uh, okay, I'll go first. Uh, I actually had a couple of people message me after I posted my my experience uh, from Saturday on my Instagram, and a couple of them said, "No, I want to try." And I just, you know what? I responded with the same thing. I just said, "Do it. <laughs> you love it. Do it." Um, I think um, I would probably tell them get a coach. I think that having a because if they're not a person who loves to create their own workouts. Yeah, I actually enjoy creating my own workouts. I, that's what I, I like to do that, especially like supersets with weight training. But if you've never done it before, get a coach and then get a buddy. Find somebody who's doing the same thing you're doing. And even if you don't train together, get a buddy. This sport can be very, it's like a solo meditation for 14 weeks. Because you don't often, you may not often train with other people. So those would be the two things I would say. I would say get a coach and get a buddy. Not that you may train with them all the time, but that you can call up and go, oh my God, I'm dying. I'm going to quit. No, you're not going to quit. 
That's those words don't come out our mouths. We just get accountability partner. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, I'm sure Tata, I mean, there, Tata, I mean, sure there are trainings and with you, Mishanda, there are days where you're like, I don't want to do this training. I've been at work for 12 hours. I do not want to get in the pool. And guess what? You brought your happy ass into the pool and you did it because you have a vision of how you want to feel on race day. And based on that vision of how you want to feel on race day, that gets your ass in the middle of January into a pool with people who are walking and talking while you're stroking and you're talking and walking and you're trying to get strokes in. Listen, I like your mentality because I don't know how much can get me out of the bed in the wintertime. That might not be, that's not my story always. However, I get what you're saying because there are moments that my friends are just like, well, how, how do you get out of bed that early before work to do it? You do what you got to do when you do it. However, I want to say on the adverse of that, if you are mentally out of it, one, seek some help, like get the help that you need. And two, if you need a rest, take that rest. Because if you go work out and you're not mentally in it, you're not going to reap the benefits of it, right? Like don't push yourself to the point of just trying to do something and then you're hating every moment of it. That's not what this is about. It's about getting the workout done, enjoying it, but also pushing yourself. So sometimes when you like, you just hung out a little too much, get your butt up. But if you're really going through a lot, seek help, get the help that you need, reset, and then try again. And with that said, we're moving on to rapid fire questions really quick. We're gonna have you guys back. Thank you so much for your time. Favorite artist, Favorite music artist? Oh, God. oh, no, don't don't ask me that. It's not just one person. I mean, I can't just go one person. Okay, well, give me one or two people that you like. They may not be your favorite, but they're your top. Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yes. Houston. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Favorite post-workout or favorite post-race food that you enjoy? makes you happy when you get to finish that hard workout or that race and you're like, I just want this as my treat. I don't use food as a reward because of my recovery work in food yes. addiction. Yes. So um, I, for me, the, there's no treat. It's just the meal that I had planned. And that's fair. And my apologies for no, not no remembering worries. that. That's fair. No, no worries. Um, I am constantly just with, uh, stuffing myself with Filipino food after every and, and you know huge energy expenditure, rice, protein, and a lot of veggies. <laughs> I love it. Transition. It's new-ish to both of you. Mm -hmm. Do you do you find yourself being a minimalist where you bring just what you need, or you have your Goldilocks where it's just right or are you a quarter kitchen sink person you're bringing everything and you have extras for others I the birds are talking to us they're telling us something. i think i'm going to be a minimalist except for i will be bringing a shoehorn okay i am still learning what to bring so i tend to bring extra <laughs> i'm still i mean in all fairness i'm still i've never done it in my mind, I've envisioned that I would be pretty minimalist, but in my, well, if I, if you see me packed to go somewhere, you're like, Jaden, why are you bringing that? You don't know, we might need a whole Band-Aid kit. You don't know. Exactly. You don't know, we might, we might need it. You might have to MacGyver something. We got to bring. I'm nine kit. years in and I'm still probably a kitchen sink hoarder, but I'm getting better. I'm, 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 I'm getting better. <laughs> um, <laughs> what inspires you? What or who inspires you? I think my future self. It's Jaden at 90. That inspires how I want to feel at 90 or 100. Love it. OK, that's a really difficult question. I have never been asked that question. Um, uh, beauty the struggles that people have to go through as well and what they've actually managed to, I mean, those inspire me a lot. I mean, you know, when I go to the gym and I see somebody working really hard to, to bring their health back, that inspires me. Um, yeah, off the top of my head so far. <laughs> okay.
what is your what does your go-to workout look like what's your favorite workout so far do you like the intervals do you like the tempos do you like uh zone two what's your favorite Wow. Okay, it's rapid fire. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm, I'm waiting for Jaden. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Over to you, Jaden. I estoy pensando, pensando. Um, I think for I don't know what my favorite workout is. I actually don't know. I like I like steady, but I That's don't, but I like to sprint. In, I do like the sprint part of the pool workout. Okay. We'll take it. We'll take a steady flow, but when you're in the pool, you like a good sprint. All right. Sprint, yeah. yeah, mine is just a combination of um, cardio, whether it's swim or run in some weights. That would be a favorite. Now, this question you may or may not be able to answer. I'm going to ask it anyway because it's what we ask everybody, and then I'll make the adjustments as necessary. Do you pee on the bike? or get off and take a proper pee break? My coaches told me about that and I thought that was the grossest thing. I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but a lot of people say, it, my coach said, you don't need to do that. That's not like a rite of passage. It's not. Um, I'm, a trans, funny. I'm a trans man. So who um, is in a female body and I just uh, don't know if that's something I'm gonna do. Plus, it's illegal. But I do hear people say, all right, if you want to stop on the bike and you want to go to the porta potty, you can, but that just stops your flow. So I don't have an answer to that yet. I'll, I'll let you know after the 70. <laughs> don't worry, we'll come back and ask. <laughs> yeah, and so you haven't had any reason to. <laughs> now, what about... Uh, have you guys worn a wetsuit? Mm -hmm. Have you peed in your wetsuit? Oh, yeah. All the time. <laughs> Look at that. That's the adjustment, right? Mm -hmm. But I just had to ask first, and then we make the adjustment. Either way you go, as when one of the things that I've learned about myself is I used to be one of those that was really particular and very picky about things. And mm -hmm. <laughs> one thing about the trash space is you lose a lot of those different, um, what, are the, what, what is it I want to call those little... Um, bashfulness yes that's yeah. a good word for it you yeah. know you start walking around with your shoes off in places that you wouldn't normally walk with your shoes off it's just certain habits and things that you may might have grown up with goes out the door and it just mm -hmm. makes you more at one with yourself and I love that thank you so much for uh to both of you for sharing about your journey and just yeah there's so much more we could really talk about and get impacted and Jaden you just mentioned probably a rocker that just kind of blew my mind a little bit about being a trans man and using the restroom and so I'm like whoa 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 like mind blown but I love that this world is so beautiful and we all get an opportunity to have choice and with that said whenever you try beginner's luck you truly always win so go out try you never know what and how you're going to win. I am Ashonda, and I have been joined by Tata and Jaden. And we will see you soon in the fall to find out more about their stories. But for now, for now, we are out. Peace. Bye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this episode. We need your help so we can continue to try at TBL. So for more information on where you can find and subscribe to this podcast, visit www.trybeginnersluck.com. And don't forget, whenever you try beginner's luck, you always win.